You know, he always give me a second to speak and I'm just like, there's strength and vulnerability. Letting people know you're not at your best and that you're weak at this moment because mm -hmm. it let people know that you're a real human being. A lot of people don't see that from me. They just think, well, Dip, you're just always doing the right thing. You always, you just always happy or you don't. It's nah, like, but you don't no see way, no way the shadow happy. work. Yeah. Nah, they don't. That's yeah. why I wear black because that's a sense of shadow work as mm -hmm. well too. Like they don't, they don't see what I go through. They don't see how I talk to myself when I rise or when I meditate or mm -hmm. when I'm working out or like just how I view my family and how I feel like I'm the the stepping stone of our generation and just or who I'm defined to be or who I'm defined to be you yeah. know because I'm defining that self and for some people they can't see that they just mm -hmm. like you just working too hard or you just you just eat too healthy or you just training yeah. too hard it's like that you don't know admiring the results and not the person yeah you yeah. don't you don't know and I have to put this work in mm -hmm. I got to be that example especially yeah. for my siblings you know yeah but um vulnerability is so important it's okay to be weak it's okay to tell people just mm -hmm. have the proper social circle to tell people that you're feeling weak at this time so they won't judge you because there's a lot of judgment there's a lot of you know you being soft right now you're mm -hmm. doing this like nah bro like i'm just going through it and i need yeah. to talk to you and mental health monday mental health mental health mental health mental health mental health and that's okay that's yeah. why you're supposed to have the harder conversations exactly. so uh when it comes to you dip having mm -hmm. the hard conversations how have you seen that play out in business and building the brand that you've built so far um it's really been just i feel like it's needed mm -hmm. for one because it makes me feel better i'm always big on um you teach people how to treat you really mm -hmm. and um and you setting that standard like we just talked about you set the standard of how you want people to treat you how you want your your life to be how you want your environment or your work life to be your work environment whatever the case is just your life you set that standard mm -hmm. so um it's, it's just been very important and it's, it's, it's um, driven me to deal with certain people and driven me to deal with not other people, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. um, and that's okay, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't burn bridges, I just say like, all right, if I ask somebody to do something um, and they don't do it or is a lack of effort or whatever the case is, I don't reach out to them like more than two or three times. Yeah. Because people know. Yeah, you know they know what they're doing there. We had the conversation about like people having their own standards. It's like, all right, maybe I'm expecting too much of you, mm -hmm. and you're not meeting that, and that's okay. I just gotta move on to the next. But it's not personal. You just gotta yeah. know like I'm on a mission here, mm -hmm. and you can't be part of this mission because you're not where I'm at. Even though you're not gonna be where I'm at, but you're not, you know, being mm -hmm. the partner that I need you to be. Yeah, you're not meeting me where I met you at originally. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, when it comes to the business and especially like wellness, yeah, right. Um, how have you felt about wellness as a business and what you've seen on the other front? I feel like wellness right now is commercialized. Mm -hmm. And I have this conversation with a lot of people. Um, yeah. Do you think that, that's dangerous in a certain capacity? Yeah, of course. Especially in America because mm -hmm. it's capitalism. Um, everything from herbs to crystals to, you know, I got you some Palo Santo sticks to mm -hmm. certain oils, everything like that. It's become... Santos. You see that? You see that? That's that's the sticks right there. We just want to make sure everyone see the sticks, right? What what these sticks do yeah. exactly? So I use them to cleanse my energy. That's what okay. a lot of people use them for to cleanse your energy. Before I pray, mm -hmm. before I go in a house, I'm around a lot of people. I I light it. You like I, these? Yeah. Walk around like smudging. Smudging. Yeah. yeah got yeah. you. Got you. A lot of people don't like to use certain terms because they think mm -hmm. it's like dedicated to certain ethnic groups, but it's just yeah, it's the we're history. all one people. It's the history. Man. Yeah, yeah, it's all one. That's people. all. Yeah. yeah, you can still believe in God and tap into other stuff. Exactly. Like, you know. You know. And yeah. then people talk about like lighting things, but mm -hmm. lighting things that's fire. That's an element of Earth. That's an element of us. Yeah. You know. But um, commercialized, mm -hmm. which I don't like at all. So I think yeah. uh, the issue with things being too commercialized is unfortunately when people commercialize stuff, they tend to change the history instead of keeping it to the history, incorporating the history into the product correctly. Mm -hmm. So when they commercialize the history, they'll only tell you the good benefits, yeah. but they'll erase the roots of where the product comes from. And then they repackage it and the next person who learns that they regurgitate that information incorrectly and don't realize they're now learning bad history 
and passing that bad history on. Yeah. And like, you know, unfortunately, when it comes to products like this, it erases us from the circles of business when things yeah. are too commercialized, too repackaged, right. and too, men too many times history has been edited, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. sure, it's messing up the culture. Man. So what other wellness businesses do you work with outside of your business? Are you just focused on supplying the community? And what does supplying the community look like? Um, so to answer your question about supplying the community, mm -hmm. that's what my community is my family. Okay. So that's where I started. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, I um, had a have a grandmother that's been like you know vegetarian my whole life. Mm -hmm. Grandfather that was into like metaphysics and um, like African history and Muslim as well too. So they're mm -hmm. like a big part of my life and who I am today. And they just always were about people. My grandfather helped a lot of youth and had a lot of uh, godsons and like taking in sons from like the streets of DC. My mm -hmm. grandmother is just very huge in like, uh, I don't wanna say activism now, but like uh, mentorship to like mediation and works out. And so she's just has her own brand that she doesn't even know she's aware of. Mm -hmm. So um, I just always wanted to make my parents proud, my grandparents proud and like represent my last name. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I've been big in. Um, What's your last name? Harad. Okay. So yeah, my government name is Darnzel. Mm -hmm. Last name is Harad, but I go by Dip. Uh, Dip has been following me since junior year high school. Childhood name, right? Childhood name, yeah. yeah. So uh, went with me to college and just stuck and yeah. That's how it be. <laughs> just stuck, man. Same with Juice. That's how it be. Man. Yeah, it was yeah. Part of the, you know, I went to Towson to play um, football. So, really? What year? Yeah, uh, 2000. So I transferred there from West Virginia State University. Mm -hmm. Went there my freshman year, 2007, fall 2007. Mm -hmm. Stayed there for a year. Transferred to Towson the next year. So 2008, 2009, I played. We're in college, same time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're the same age. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, hey, because um, I worked out with Ty Smith. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's my boy. Uh, yeah. We worked over, we were trained by Toby. Toby? Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. who uh, works over at the math now. Gotcha. Yeah, he uh, he used to train me, Ty, worked out with Navarro Bowman, a couple he other folks, great street, folks. Yeah. yeah, we grew up on the same street. Really? Gateway Boulevard that's awesome. And District Heights. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to go to Sulin jurisdiction-wise, mm -hmm. but my mama ain't want me to go. Okay. They was off the hook then. There was a time where they didn't even have a principal. Like, the principal ah. quit. <laughs> so, yeah. I heard stories. Yeah, I heard stories. Yeah. I heard stories. But that was a great era for their football team mm -hmm. and sports. But mm -hmm. I um, went to Forsville Military Academy at that point. Um, okay. It shut down now. But mm -hmm. I went there, and um, it was a great decision for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Would you say... Um, does this feel full circle for you, being in wellness as a business? Yeah. Okay, yeah. how so? Because... Um, Wellness has just been my whole life. I've always been like a thinker. I've always been like um, different in mm -hmm. a way. I've seen things differently. I never went with the crowd with things. Um, and I started to, you know, my family can say I've always kind of been quiet but goofy at the same time. But mm -hmm. I started to pay attention to some of our habits and seeing how like diabetes became, you know, uh, big in our family. Cancer. Um, mm -hmm. My great grandmother, she transitioned when she was in her 50s. Yeah. You know, and a lot of my grandparents have transitioned because of these type of illnesses. My condolences. Yeah, thanks, man. And it's, um, and I started to look at them like, you know, a lot of people say like, you know, doctors that ask you, you know, in your history of your family, who has high blood pressure, who has mm -hmm. diabetes and all this. It's not in our genes, it's in our habits. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really started to change my mind about like, all right, we, we gotta do something different. Yeah. And if y'all not gonna do it, I gotta do it. And yeah, of course, yeah. as a, you know, African American man, it's like I'm getting a lot of pushback because I'm mm -hmm. raised by a DC PG family that loves crabs, mm -hmm. that loves uh uh, chicken and mm -hmm. ribs and mm -hmm. pork and all of this I stuff. I mean, you guys got some good recipes on this side. It's a lot, yeah. But yeah. Um, I think what it comes down to, and a lot of folks don't think about it, is what is the quality of life that you want for yourself? Yeah. So, like, for example, and I think, I don't think that differently from my family, but I think I do experience life differently from my family. Uh -huh. My dad was never a pro athlete, but he was always super athletic. Like, yeah. I remember him taking me down to the track uh, to work out over at Maplewood over in New Jersey because I'm originally yeah. from New Jersey mm. and he was like lapping me like going <laughs> strides, strides. Yeah. I would be like at the end of one lap on the mile track and he'd be like mid mid lap four and I ain't never seen that because like at that time 
in high school I was like 278 pounds okay and I think this man was at like 243 pounds and he was just built different yeah but he was built big like me like he had the gut I was like a fat kid but he had like the gut but that gut was not stopping this man right, right? and it was like solid and I always thought to myself how this motherfucker so big moving so fast yeah. <laughs> right and it's like you know then I started seeing like the dynamics of how his stride was mm -hmm. his breathing pattern mm -hmm. I noticed that he was eating different from me cause like you know when you grow up in a Jamaican household yeah. Jamaican is just Caribbean soul food so yeah. when it comes to like Kalalu Aki and salt fish yeah. you'll see a lot of the different oils breadfruit um, uh -huh. festival and everything else that's what I was like raised on yeah. um, jerk pork jerk chicken all yeah. that other stuff yeah. but then when I started doing tryouts and I got like out of college I realized oh now I'm gonna have to have a better diet if yeah. I want to actually dominate and like this is someone who's like I had a stress Achilles since 2009 mm. torn meniscus torn shoulder um fractured elbow but like my diet was what kept me in the game so even now yeah. when I when I go to work out no matter the season layers of hoodies you okay. feel what I'm saying I'll be in there for three hours working on the technique when it comes to the squat when I yeah. wake up in the morning smoothie yeah blueberries right. coconut yeah. water there spinach you, know. you feel what yeah. I'm saying and it's like I never thought I would be this person who enjoys waking up and looking forward to a smoothie but like right. you feel yourself breathe better mm -hmm. you feel what I'm saying you feel your body work better you feel what it's like like when your organs are like extremely healthy and they right. want to do everything they can to be their best right. versus I, I may have had a little bit too much meat this week we may need to cut back and reassess like how much dairy is in our diet exactly if you have cheesecake you can't drink milk that week you mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying yeah. picking and choosing yeah. and I think unfortunately when it comes to a lot of our cultures especially meeting DC halfway mm -hmm. a lot of folks don't work on what is the middle point to be healthy and still enjoy life yeah. but as you're building learning you may cut some things out and incorporate them back later in your diet and right. how that affects your health yeah yeah and just being open to it yeah you, know, you just gotta be willing to try you mm -hmm. know it's we have this long life you know god willing and it's just like why do we continue to do the same things that mm -hmm. our parents once done and grandparents once done why we be the trailblazers for the next generation because we yeah. are like you and i are the middle child right now mm -hmm. you know like j cole say like we have this younger generation great artists, great artists. Great artists and we have yeah. our grandparents who are right in the middle and we mm -hmm. see the difference we yeah. communicate with both sides which is a very important part part mm -hmm. And that's right now in this world because the youth need us, mm -hmm. you know, and the grandparents and the elders, they just like, well, they just don't understand. It's like, well, you got to take a different approach because we yeah. come from that. We come yeah. from being able to play outside and get it on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, it's just different. And then understanding yeah. like, hey, a lot of your habits are changing. So like right yeah. now, we have like access to Uber and all these other things. And right. most folks will be like, well, why don't you take the bus or public transportation? But when you become people like you and I, we're busy yeah. and we're counting every minute. Yeah. So a lot of folks are thinking we're taking Uber because like we're lazy and it's like, no, we know we have a limited time to go to the gym, get in that three hour workout, get mm -hmm. back to the house, cook something up, work on an assignment that you got to work on on. I got my workout in, yeah. right, I'm back, I'm getting my work in. Okay, cool. How much time do I have left to go to my relationships? Because like, if I'm not pouring into my relationships, I'm not really going to be able to pour back into myself. Right. And I'm not going to have the battery that you guys need for all these content that like I post on social media. Yeah. Me having the real hard conversations or not so hard conversations with my mom. Yeah. Sitting down in my family members understanding hey we could reach out to him at this time and he got us versus all right i gotta walk and i'm tired as hell yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah i get you so what's uh the benefits of cmos i remember we were talking about that last time when you attended the um the total truth event that we did on saturday well you weren't attending you were attending and vending and vending yeah yeah, yeah. um so that was a great event i think that's very important to have i'm glad that Britt. you know i met him for one mm -hmm. uh like almost a year ago now and then he invited me to the event and that's how i met you yeah so um sea moss sea moss is a uh seaweed to mm -hmm. bring it down mm -hmm. um it has a lot of minerals inside of it is uh natural comes from the ocean but it's how I kind of start off by telling people is that it's very important for your gut. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's been a big thing about like prebiotics and probiotics now and gut health. And gut health, once you get that correct, um, it helps you, you know, lose weight by um, strengthening like your kidneys and mm -hmm. your liver mm -hmm. and your, your uh, intestines and getting your waste out. And once you don't have backed up waste in your system from eating, you know, maybe meats or junk food or whatever the case is, mm -hmm. your skin get better. 
Then when your skins get better, your energy levels get better. Sea moss is also good for uh, lubrication of your joints. Yeah. Um, it's also, some people say it's a libido, especially in Jamaican culture. Mm -hmm. um, I, They're big on that. My, <laughs> my yeah. boy and I, so I make a, a mango sea moss. I first mm -hmm. started to make that in like two years ago. Okay. Making sea moss for three years, they're trying to perfect it. Mm -hmm. But funny thing is, he took the mango sea moss and he says, he swore that's the reason why his girl and received like that conceived their first child okay off of mango sea moss mm -hmm. my wife and i we had some last summer and now we have a baby girl mm -hmm. so we're looking for you a see the correlation i'm yeah, trying to see you know yeah. if, if it's really you know mm -hmm. but that's what they say in the jamaican culture yeah. you know and i i love jamaica mm -hmm. for one you know we've been there for about i think four times now okay and even thinking about getting property there or mm -hmm. just moving there do the, you know what the process of getting property on the jamaican side would be uh, to know somebody local, mm -hmm. getting you know good with them, um, and probably partner with them. Because okay. I've heard it's hard to kind of like come in as an outsider. It is. To build it is. It. I'm Jamaican. My family. <laughs> it is hard. I've I've heard those stories too. Yeah. I have uh, family and relations in Kingston, Manchester, and like two other areas that because Jamaica Jamaica has a very weird history. When you get to know the island, like yeah. you have the bigger places that are known, and then. You have certain roads that are just roads and not streets. Yeah. So like people just know those roads. Hey, when you go there, you make that left. It's no longer signs. It's just making the left and yeah, like yeah. understanding the landmarks of oh, that's actually a road that you can go down also. Right. So like that's also how the relationship works on the Jamaican side too. Yeah, too. I've thought about what it would be like to have property there, but I don't. I don't have a super intimate closeness with my family off the island now that my oh. grandmother's passed away, and most of the Jamaicans I know that's within the family most of them are here on the american side gotcha. so it's yeah. like you know don't be something that you're not just because you're trying to fulfill this fantasy that like look if you weren't practicing being a part of the culture heavy now yeah you're not gonna find it later you may have a different appreciation for it yeah and you may be lucky enough to have the right relationships with the right folks but like i've always been surrounded by jamaicans all my life right so it's like all right i don't need to go to the island because i got my people here right yeah, yeah. i get you yeah then me coming in as an american mm -hmm. you know it's just like you're they call you yankee or american they call me like I know. I know for me, they call me Yankee. Nah, I don't. They yeah. just call me like I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm speaking Wagwan, mm -hmm. Midair. Mm -hmm. Like I'm fruit all the time. Like yeah. I'm, I'm super tan. They mm -hmm. just think I'm from there. Chilling, Straight chilling. Up. So yeah, yeah I, I get accepted, and that's what I love about it. Yeah, the most. Nah, yeah. that's awesome. Um, so would you be willing to walk me through your process of what goes into making the seaweed or would that be more personal on a business recipe level uh no i can walk you through the okay. process because i know my mom has her own process but like i know yeah. different cooks are personal about their stuff so you gotta ask yeah so for me it takes um mm -hmm. i want to say about it could take between 48 and 72 hours to make okay um first cleanses it so i started making some today uh mm -hmm. cleanse it thoroughly for close to 30 minutes to an hour um, to get all of the uh, some extra sea particles off of it. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I had a baby crab on there. Yeah. Um, some rocks. You'll, you'll some, discover some stuff. Yeah, some, some yeah. little things, some barnacles, some little things on mm -hmm. there, you know, when you get it organically and when it's right. Yeah, know? right in the bag. Yeah. 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 So get <laughs> My mom used to boil her joint at night time. Yeah, yeah, boil it for a while before doing the whole process. Really? Yeah. So she does it that way. Yeah. I never did it. I never I'll, I'll talk to her and see what she says. But like, yeah. she used to so you you tell me your process first then i'll fill you in on like what i saw as a child and as a young adult growing up when yeah. it came to like her process okay so 30 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. um cleansing uh, and rinsing um then i let it overnight put it like cut up some um, lemons and some limes mm -hmm. put that in there juice them in there um let that stay overnight in the fridge uh, the next day, or maybe I let it sit for a whole another 24 hours just mm -hmm. to really get it clean. Then I'll, big pot? Big pot, yeah. yeah. Um, cleanse it for like another hour, mm -hmm. really. Um, listen to some type of Afro beats or some type of reggae music mm -hmm. to really just get the good intentions within it. Mm -hmm. um, I try like, you know, uh, marinate it with crystals one time and it's just, it's cool. Mm -hmm. But I just rather have a positive, you know, um, being before mm -hmm. I produce anything that I'm gonna give to people and yeah. I want to heal them, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, um, then I blend it and uh, depending on what fruits I'm gonna blend in it, what type of organic fruits, that's how I blend it up, you know. When it comes to the sea moss recipes that you put together, do you ever have an expiration date of how long it's good for? 
So what I really don't know, and there's nothing out there that I research is like plain sea moss. I really mm -hmm. don't know how long that lasts. Yeah. You know, especially with like the cold temperatures. Mm -hmm. I know it lasts longer, but I'm not sure. For the sea moss I make with uh, elderberry, strawberry, blueberry, and mangoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were talking about that recipe last time. Yeah. That was, was that the sleep recipe? For uh, the tea or the sea moss? The, so I have you had a, sleep tea. Yeah, I have, I have mm -hmm. teas and then I have sea moss and yeah. I got the sticks. Is this, is this one of the teas These right here? This, that's my this one of the teas. You, you see, you got the teas right there. You see that? Yeah. And then you see the, look at the branding. You see the, you see the green. That's, that's what he does. All right, that's, yeah. that's dip right there. You see look, green, green right there. All right, that's, <laughs> I'll put that back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my breathe tea. That's really good for like sinuses mm -hmm. and uh, respiratory issues and allergies and things of that nature. So that's mm -hmm. really good. The peppermint in it helps settle your stomach as well too and the aromatic flavors. Okay. Um, but so I have two types of sea moss for the summertime only, which I call, you know, I go off of like the African calendar, the summer solstice, mm -hmm. made a tropical blend, which is the strawberry and mango, strawberry mm -hmm. and mango. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my all time favorite is the strawberry, blueberry and elderberry. Mm -hmm. And I have elderberry, I steep elderberry for like 24 hours mm -hmm. and then I pour it in and mix it up with the berries as well too. Okay. So okay. because I use organic berries and you said how long it lasts, mm -hmm. I put on my bottle like three weeks, mm -hmm. but they can last four. But because of their berries and because they're organic, after a while they start to ferment. And then also liability. liability so like that's well that's what too. I think about uh, yeah. quite often. And like with so many, I'd say amateurs, because like first you're an amateur when you get into the thing, then you mm -hmm. start to do the research, yeah. then you start to become more professional. You start putting like boundaries around the business, right? What should have a certain date? I've always asked folks. Like I had a young man that made a couple of oils, and I said, "Hey man, do you have an expiration date on your stuff?" He said, "Nah, not really. This could last like forever." I said, "No, but nothing, <laughs> nah. nothing lasts forever." Yeah. So I was like, you know, put an expiration date on your thing because mm -hmm. I was like. You don't want to be held liable for if a recipe you use this changes over a certain amount of time and it may become poisonous to right. somebody. Like even if something starts good, yeah. everything has an expiration date and sometimes it's good just to put an expiration date so that moves you out of liability. Agreed 100%. And you yeah. should always be working on your products mm -hmm. to find better ways to you know source your products, new connections, healthier sources, whatever the case is, mm -hmm. definitely. So, so when it comes to shopping on the DC side, have you did you ever get any pushback when it came to originally getting into CMOS and this health and everything else and different suppliers or were you lucky enough to find one supplier that just takes care of your needs I've so I'm big on like searching and trying I mm -hmm. knew like this is my first business really I'm starting um, mm -hmm. I started like some clothing things back in the day in yeah. high school but I was like this is something I'm intentional about Which high school I went to Forsville Military Academy. Okay, I remember yeah, you mentioned Forsville that. Forsville High School, but, like, yeah. prior to then, but Forsville Military Was they over Academy. by Temple Hills? Yeah, right okay. in Forsville, right down the street from uh, Donnell Drive where Forsville uh, Mall is. Yeah, my, my partner, she went to Temple Hill. Temple, okay. Yeah, and then she yeah. went to Towson. So when you're saying, I'm like, the Towson, years are lining yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I forgot what her major is. What was your major? Criminal justice. Okay, well, started cool, from cool. business. Uh-huh. Um, communications and then criminal justice because mm -hmm. I had this whole like bad boys, you know, Mar Lawrence, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Will Smith thing. It's yeah, like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a dope That's life. Might as well, might as well. Hey, the jokes are flowing. We yeah. might as well do it. Yeah, yeah, cool. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that can be, you know, mm -hmm. Martin or, or Will. So. I mean, you got it. You got the look. Yeah. You got the persona. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and no, of course, man, you, you count yeah. it. You count it. That's all, man. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah um, yeah, so not really any pushback, man. Mm -hmm. I want to say, like, this journey of, like, healing, as I call it, yeah. has just been, I've been getting different signs, either numerical or just through, through people, just letting me know I'm on the right path. Mm -hmm. Whether it's random conversations to uh, I'm studying something and I'm meeting like I, I met my so I did a DNA test mm -hmm. um, just really to find out like where I'm, I come from you yeah. know I remember I was ignorant um, in high school man and I kind of feel bad about it now but when people used to ask me it's like where are you from because mm -hmm. like I'm light skinned I used to be more light skinned than this and mm -hmm. curly hair a little bit and I'm just like I'm just a nigga mm -hmm. and I used to just laugh and thought it was cool but it's, it's really not because yeah. I actually come from somewhere I don't come from this land mm -hmm. you know so um Nigerian popped up a lot. I did okay. like four or five tests. No, not Nigerian mm -hmm. um, tribes, uh, Igbo and Yoruba. Mm -hmm. So I met my first Yoruba brother at um, this place called Dynamic Wellness, and that's become a like of, uh, royalty tribes right there. Yeah, some yeah. of my best friends are um, Eagle. 
Mm. No, Igbo. Yeah, Igbo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I met him, and he just, like, the culture is in him. Like, mm -hmm. he had, I researched, um, when I first found out, I just rep I researched, like, the culture and the tribes and what they represent and things of that nature, and mm -hmm. the scarring for the Yoruba is really, like, it was big back then, and I found out that they did the scarring, which is like on their cheeks, mm -hmm. on their bodies, foreheads, whatever the case is, just yeah. to identify what tribe they came from when they were slaves. Mm -hmm. But when I seen him, uh, as, a, as a big brother, um, had the crystals on, had some uh, the Adinka symbols on, Adinka mm -hmm. symbols on. Um, he had the scarring on both cheeks on his forehead. He said he had to get them redone from since he was a, a baby, and I'm just like, wow, man, and it's like. If I didn't choose to go in the store today, I'd have probably never met him. Mm -hmm. So it's just like things like that. I've been going with my gut. Mm -hmm. So um, no pushback at all. Just really a lot of help. Okay. A lot of people see that I'm genuine about it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm studying like Reiki right now. Mm -hmm. And my Reiki teacher. The use of energy and the movement of. Energy, yep, yep. And our auras mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, um, I had a lot of interesting conversations with her doing my process. And she's just like. You know, told me about my life path number, which is a six, and that's a nurturer. Mm -hmm. And um, I call myself a healer as well. This on all aspects of life. So, yeah, it hasn't been no pushback. It's just been, I want to say, divine guidance and leadership. And the community has just been helping me out. Really. How do you protect your energy as a healer? Um, I meditate. Mm -hmm. I pray. Um, I stay internal i've always been like a thinker mm -hmm. so i stay internal a lot meaning like having sovereignty over my mind body spirit and emotions at all times and it took me some time to get there you know yeah. even to to know like that was possible in a way you know um i think i said workout as well that's like always been my biggest uh stress reduction music as well too mm -hmm. um like i said playing football running track when growing up so that's Working out has always been my outlet, and if I don't, like, mm -hmm. then I'm off. And you can tell, like, I'm tense. Like, yeah. I'm a little more, like, agitated. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I can go without eating, but it's like working out, that's a different yeah, thing. Like that's a I part need, of my life. I need my fix. Yeah, yeah. I, need, I need my time, mm -hmm. too. That's part of my time, you know. Yeah. So, luckily, um, I've always made time for that. I don't go to the gym. It's mm -hmm. right in my crib where mm -hmm. I feel comfortable with it. I'm in my zone. I got my beats on. Yeah. And I'm doing my thing. You yeah. know what's funny? I I thought I'd be the person who would be good for like working out at home. Mm -hmm. And I have a certain like, I could do a home routine for a couple of months, but like, I need to feed off other people's energy. I need to see like, I right, what are you guys working on? What are we putting in? Who's really about that? Like, cause, yeah. cause it's nice. It's nice to see the flow of people and focuses yeah because like me seeing other people's focus lets me know like hey am i working in the right direction right. are we all working in the right direction yeah. is there someone who might need advice because like i'm a very silent got hoodies on hey if you're doing a good job to me doing a good job is you showed up every day right so like and i'm usually in like the later batch of folks when i work out in the gym so i woke up i walk up to someone 10 minutes before close hey what's your name yeah. get your name all right look just want to let you know you're doing a great job. Yeah. Been in this bitch for like a month. <laughs> be killing that night time. You be in here. I be in here. See you. You be over there. Yeah. Doing a great job. Good job. Yeah. I'm leaving. Just, just want to let you know. 100%. Because like, you know, it's a, it's a lot of us who are trying to accomplish different things, but not enough of us are complimenting people on the work that they're putting forth. Mm -hmm. And what I notice is folks will try to open up to me and be like, well, I'm not doing enough, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm not here for that. Nah. I don't see that. <laughs> yeah. I see what you're putting forth right now. Cause mm -hmm. like, it's bad to not give yourself credit for what you've done. Cause yeah. certain people have a personality and like, I'm one of those people. I don't credit myself too much. I credit myself just enough to be like, hey, did a great job, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Pat myself on the back, all right, what do we need to work on next? Cause like, I have seen, I've seen myself give myself too much credit and it affect the work ethic. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I've been one of the folks who like in the past, it's like, nah, we did this, this, and this. You just show up and do it again next year. Not yeah. realizing you may have taken five steps a little bit less yeah. that affected your game and who you were and who you could have been. So it's like, you know, you realize a lot of your work does come down to like, hey, are you doing the work or are you just happy to be there? Right. 
So I'm really big on that. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. Um, I think being like, you know, having the circle talk with the brothers, mm -hmm. having that type of energy and being around each other, you feed off of that energy and make you like open up or become better and grow. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Like when I used to go to the gym, if I see brothers in there all the time, like, mm -hmm. yeah, I see you, I get your head nod or I walk off like, boom. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm running, I see somebody running a lot. When I'm running, it's like, I give you high five or, you know, mm -hmm. peace or whatever the case is. But yeah. Definitely. You got to acknowledge people, man. No, no, you do, you do. And then also like give people space to fall off i don't think there's such thing as a fall off i yeah. think there's such thing as like hey i needed something different so i stopped becoming the thing you admired me for because that's not what i need right now yeah so like for example i used to be in a gym reckless like i used to be hand cleaning in the pool one think about what i just said one hand cleaning in the pool one of those, right yeah deadlifting like 640 pounds squatting 650 yeah. i think my max on deadlift was like almost 670 uh bench pressing 500 pounds and that was like when i was training focused everything yeah. else yeah and then i went through my uh traumatic uh, moment that led up to all the work that I do with Get Home Safe. Yeah. And I realized going to the gym didn't feel the same for me. There was like a year and a half to two years that like I felt like I was showing up to work out, but I wasn't working out. I was just showing up because that's what I got used to doing. So when the pandemic happened, I really got a moment. I was like, hey, man, stop working out. Yeah. Like just you, you've you worked out all your life. You learn to love football. You learn to love working out. You love to learn the gym. Yeah. When are you going to just exist as a person and not be as strong as you used to be and see what that side is like? Do you like yeah. that side? Does your body need that side? And I think I went through like three months of being in pain because I became hyper aware of like all my injuries that I was just carrying mm. from like so many years of doing sports doing pro tryouts and like yeah. when you do pro tryouts whether you get the contract or not there's a an extreme amount of toll that takes on your body naturally you feel what I'm saying so you're talking about keeping your body in shape to be ready for any NFL tryouts, keeping your body in shape to be ready for any um, CFL tryouts, right. keeping your body in shape to be ready for any AFL tryouts. That's all three seasons right there. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, right. and it's yeah. like, you know, if your body doesn't have any downtime or any rest time, right. it technically starts to just destroy itself. That's why you're supposed mm. to pick like, hey, which league are you going towards? What do they do in their tryouts? Who are you? Who are you not? Do you have the numbers that match? Are you going to be him? Or do you yeah. have to just give up and like revamp who you are and who you've had to be? Right. And I realized in my experience now in the gym, I could, I was uh, in the gym uh, yesterday, went in there, fucked up real quick. 315, five sets of 10. Five sets of ten. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? I just got back in the gym May. I'm already doing three fifteen, five yeah. sets of ten. Yeah. Bent over rows for ninety, um, ninety pounds, doing it for ten, super set, right? Yeah. My man was like, Damn, that means like that's forty reps. That you know, that means you're like back at five hundred. I said, Nah, man, as athletes, we know that's not how that works. Right. Exactly. You did ten. That is ten, ten, ten. <laughs> yeah. That is the sets. That is your top number. Right. That's not a straight you didn't do forty, 40 reps nah. on three fifteen. Nah. That's not how that works. Works. that's not the right math i was like as an athlete and as someone that cares about your body you have to be honest with your math and who you are and who mm -hmm. you're trying to be and who you're not trying to be yeah i was like we're not here to be extremely strong we're here to be fit right and figure out what works and what doesn't work and what we may need to learn and change and then go from there exactly and i was like you know that's how i actually apply a lot of stuff that we've done when it comes to like mental health advocacy advocacy and everything else because yeah. it's like eventually you realize you're gonna make mistakes right like when it comes to the recipes have you made mistakes or said ah that's not gonna work of course you feel what i'm saying yeah. but what you did is you didn't give up on yourself you pick yourself back up and you said i right, i'm doing this for the clients i'm doing this for the folks i have a community around me right how do i support them so how do you go about facilitating talks with the community or just getting feedback on what you've done so far i just really ask people man mm -hmm. uh as far as feedback i just after about a week or two, mm -hmm. I reach out to people, just ask, you know, how was the CMOS, how was the T? Positive results all the time. Um, and, you know, I've never been like, it's still kind of wild for me to create something that I'm mm -hmm. passionate about and people are, well, I love your products. This was amazing. It's really helped me. And Is I'm it just, wild to create? I mean, you had a you had a clothing brand. Yeah, but it's uh -huh. just, 
you know, you see, you. I never been like a person that like big myself up or give myself mm -hmm. credit growing up ever. Mm -hmm. Like I always, I'm the oldest of six for one. Yeah. So it was always for me to like do the right thing. This we, goes back to what we talked about, where you had to be first in a race. You didn't just have to run a good yeah, race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, I just was the first one. I had to learn everything. I had to make people proud, and I, and I made my lifestyle like a light for people. Nobody had to worry about me. I had to make sure my mama never worried about mm -hmm. me. Like. I'm a morning person because in like the third or fourth grade, yeah, I told myself one morning, I'm just like, I know I gotta go to school. Wake up, bro. Just get up. Like your mm -hmm. mama shouldn't have to tell you to get up and do this, mm -hmm. to to get your food together, to do this and do that. You know, just to wake up. I, let's just do it. Yeah. So I'm just like, all right, let's just do it. Um, that's when my mindset really started to change. Mm -hmm. And then sports was just a whole nother level just to see what I physically can do. Mm -hmm. And that changed my mind too from, you know, two a days mm -hmm. to just being around other brothers that's just faster, stronger than me and just really competing, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, but yeah, sometimes it's still kind of like, dang, like I really created something that somebody loves and that's really helping them. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it's keeping me going. You okay. know what I'm saying? It's keeping me going and kind of really forgot the, the original question. But. Oh, how have you facilitated getting feedback from your community on what you've created? Yeah, just reaching back, um, really seeing, when I'm at events and I'm vending, I really don't like to sell products. That's not mm -hmm. my thing. I want to have a conversation. Yeah, so you'd rather the products are there one word. Yeah, not. like these yeah. are dope, but I always push the foundations of life. The mm -hmm. foundations is drinking water, mm -hmm. having a fitness plan, Mm -hmm. Eating the nutritional balanced meals, um, having a positive social circle for your your mental health. Yeah. Um, getting enough rest. You're doing those foundational things. Your life is going to change no matter what. Because mm -hmm. if you put these herbs in your body and you're not doing the foundational things, it's counterproductive. Yeah. It's like getting two Big Macs and some water or a diet coke. Mm -hmm. It's like what are you doing? You're wilding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? You're wilding. You know. So yeah, I, I push that, and then some people mm. they um. They just come out and say like, well, I've been dealing with this or mm -hmm. I've been trying to do this. And it's like, so I read when folks tell you they've been dealing with this, uh, what is their description? Are they talking like body aches, headaches, not enough yeah, rest? Not enough like rest. Like what problems do you come across in your field when so, it comes to what you cater to? Yeah. So energy levels mm -hmm. for one. Mm -hmm. Um what else I can say? Uh, mucus buildup. They mm -hmm. might have a cough they had for a very long time, especially yeah. after COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say um, they might have some heart issues. Um, nothing very serious, but it's just... Mm -hmm. It can be like leading to anxiety. So just having a certain type of talk with them. It don't yeah. have to be pushing like this type of herb or this type of uh, antidepressant herb that's mm -hmm. going to calm you down. It's just like, all right, what can you do? Because everything is already within you. Mm -hmm. Nature is just like the bonus, but you control everything within you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, you have the steps, but you have yeah. to set the steps up yourself and practice them. Yeah, all yeah. of that stuff. Digestion, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, my biggest thing and my focus with all of this was diabetes, honestly. Mm -hmm. So that's like my goal. Okay. Because it's so okay. high in our community. Are you looking to eliminate diabetes? Um, or just like put us in a better why, place. Why not, man? Yeah, yeah, why yeah, not? Since we here, yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do that. I can put that on my back. No, um, that's real. My, that's real. my grandfather, which I mentioned, and my father, mm -hmm. they both have diabetes. Yeah. Um, and that was a are big, they doing better now? There, my grandfather is he's battling. Mm -hmm. Um, and my my pops is he's doing great. Mm -hmm. You know, it it shocked him. It really woke him up to his life and his fast paced habit and mm -hmm. just eating out all the time. And I'm actually proud of him for doing that. Really okay. got big into cycling. So you told him that you're proud of him. Yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. Told him I loved him. Like it's mm -hmm. we never had like the the best relationship, but I always had to remember like he had me young. He had me like seventeen, eighteen, mm -hmm. and it's like. How would I be having a child at yeah. 17, 18 with this woman that I wasn't really even stable Completely with? Completely different person you know? at that time of their life. Yeah. yeah. So if I wasn't on this path of like healing, always had a different mindset, I would have never like sat by like, damn, like he was going through a lot back then. And it's yeah. like, I get why he didn't want me or why he wasn't around because this is, that's a lot. That's 17, mm -hmm. 18. I can only imagine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So had a conversation with him. He had a conversation with me. You know, he apologized, mm -hmm. told me he's proud of me and who I've become and things of that nature. So yeah. our relationship is better. Yeah. Do you think building a better relationship with your father took practice from helping all these people up to that point? Yeah, because it got one college and, um, mm -hmm. you know, getting involved with my now wife, my goddess. 
congratulations. I was I was yeah. really happy when we were talking about that at the event. Yeah. Yeah, I could like feel sometimes when people talk, you can feel the joy of the person that they're talking about. Yeah. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? And you there was just so much joy and abundance when you were talking about it. I was like, see, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and I remember that, man. Yeah. It was kind of weird. I'm just like, why is he saying, you know, congratulations? And yeah. All. But she's been like an advocate for mm -hmm. and a big part of why I kind of started with, you know, on nutrition and mm -hmm. fasting. Um, she has some like digestive issues mm -hmm. that I ain't really gonna go into, but it's just I feel you, my partner do too. Yeah, I, I feel you. I yeah. knew as her partner mm -hmm. you know which i've learned to say throughout the years um a partner because we're on this partnership throughout life yeah um that i had to be a that better takes practice so i'll be practicing every day yeah. so trust me i feel you yeah i had yeah. to be a better partner for her so it's mm -hmm. just like we can't be eating out fast foods we can't do all of this dairy we can't mm -hmm. do all of this sugar because it's not yeah it's making endorphins go up and you're mm -hmm. happy and you're smiling and all yeah. that but this is not there's a limit to it yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's a very big limit especially mm -hmm. if we're trying to get over something and mm -hmm. we know we can do it so yeah. let's be consistent so um i think she got a little annoyed with me like doing a certain process in the early years mm -hmm. because like I got serious about it. Yeah. Like, nah, you can't eat this, or you only eat this once a month. I'm trying to do this for you. Yeah, like, yeah, like it's 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 huge, man. Yeah, and I know yeah. she appreciated it because she hasn't had any issues, man, for mm -hmm. a couple of years now. You know, and a lot of uh, you know, a lot of her aunts and grandparents during you know our pregnancy throughout mm -hmm. the last year. She hasn't had any common like issues that a lot of women have, such as like a heartburn or any type of uh, nauseating uh, experiences like that, except for morning sickness that only lasts for like a week or two. Mm -hmm. But it's just, you know, we want to push that, like diet is so important. Mm -hmm. Like what you eat and what you put in your body is so important. And then on my side, it's really like the mental health part. It's just like everything is within you. That's what I always say. And then everything else is in, with, is in nature that you need to heal yourself. Mm -hmm. So just knowing like this is your life taking control of it at all times no matter what having sovereignty over your mind body emotion your experiences your reactions your responses mm -hmm. and being intentional about this each day you rise you know yeah. don't get on your phone for the thir first 30 minutes to an hour yeah. you know give and, yourself a moment to reset yeah and yeah. realize like you got another chance and what are you going to do with it drink mm -hmm. some water look in the mirror say some affirmations mm -hmm. meditate pray mm -hmm. all right social media cool that's your thing go ahead and get on it but yeah. have some time for yourself first yeah yeah does uh that mindfulness play into other parts of your life outside of your family like are there ever people that you do business with where you're like all right, you dropping the ball, but let me check in and see what's going on first. <laughs> yeah, it's, mindfulness is my life, man. Mm -hmm. Like, and everybody around me knows it. So, um, yeah, I have these hard conversations with my. I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Psi okay. new, from Towson University. So, okay. um, my man Cross Kappa over at uh, Montclair State. Okay. Yeah. Never been there. I don't know that yeah. chapter. Oh, but so that's I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then cool. he graduated <laughs> over in law from Howard University. So Shout out the Texas side. Yeah. Okay, we're close yeah, with Yeah, Nigerian um, also. Yeah, we're yeah. close with Howard University. Okay. Yeah, and Morgan cool, State cool. as well too. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, with you know. That was like the first, like I said, I'm the oldest, so that was my first like. Well, you said Kappa or Alpha. Kappa. Oh, yeah, yeah, new, Kappa. yeah, yeah, yeah. Red and sure. crimson yeah. and cream. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the pretty boys. Yeah. <laughs> One of my boys just crossed Alpha also, and like this chapter yeah. in his life, and we the same age. So when he did that, I was like, God damn. Yeah. Folks coming out the woodwork you playing the game, but I mean, do. you know, hey, the the dream is the dream. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. During my process, man, we had a uh, we called it MOIP back then. That's like the intake process of mm -hmm. the official process. Mm -hmm. But we had a brother in there that was about like 70, man. And we was joking, like, because he looked like one of the founders. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, bro, like, this was your dream. And I know a lot of brothers that, you know, they they started the process and they never finished. And I know mm -hmm. that hangs over their head, man. Yeah. Like, from different conversations. Like, I met Britt. Well, I'm not even going to that. I'm about to, I'm about to cut that out. <laughs> I got you. I got but, you. Um, I got you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's... Um, but anywho, mm -hmm. that was my first introductions of having, like, a brotherhood and having, like, a lot of... Uh, brothers around me in the same age mm -hmm. and like we're growing up and going through this process together and you can't hide nothing yeah 
all your insecurities are going to come out. Your fears are going to come mm -hmm. out. Your weaknesses are going to come out. Yeah. And like we all grew from that, but at the same time, we learn to hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. So and we got, also, I think what's interesting about that is you're really meeting people in their growing process, understanding yeah. they're not going to be this person anymore after a certain point. Right. Yeah. So, yeah that process too. Yeah. So yeah, just um, checking in and holding people accountable. I'm mm -hmm. that person that like. I see what you're posting a lot, mm -hmm. you know, but it doesn't align with the conversation we just had or I'm hearing things about you. So I'm going to pull up on you. I'm like, bro, what's going on? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say I heard this. I heard that. Like, I hate when people do that. Like, yeah. let's have a conversation and see what's real. Yeah. Let's see all sides of the story. Your action items got to follow with yeah. where you're trying to go. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't say like you have this type of digestive issue or you having these type of issues in your life with mm -hmm. women or family, whatever the case is, but you're always drinking. You're always mm -hmm. out. It's not nothing to celebrate brother yeah you know what i'm saying there's nothing to celebrate yo right that's actually a great point you're always out but there's nothing to celebrate there's nothing to celebrate yeah man. so like what are you chasing yeah yeah people yeah what yeah. are you really chasing man yeah and I, I tell people like you just um it's cool to just sit back and just chill and work on yourself and mm -hmm. you know be gone for a while man it's, there's nothing wrong with that because you're working on yourself do you think it's terrifying for people to sit with themselves Hell sometimes yeah. like yeah. just themselves 2020 man yeah Woo! 2020 that was my partner will tell you when 2020 hit i told her verbally i'm actually afraid of i've i've been in my in my dark era mm -hmm. and dark space and what's funny is you can have another one. Those errors don't stop. They exactly. the comeback. They yeah. Comeback kings right there, right? <laughs> and I was like, you know, I know who I am and I've understood what I've lost and what that turned me into. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are not gonna come out of this 2020 situation the same like they think they are. Yeah. They're gonna have a lot of time with themselves. They're gonna start to run out of resources. They're mm -hmm. gonna start to run out of things to do. And then they're going to start asking themselves the right questions that they've never asked before. Exactly. And that's going to change a lot of it's things. It's going to hurt. It's going yeah. to sting so bad. Yeah. Man. yeah. And, and I think what makes it worse is you don't get to run away from yourself. You don't nah. get to take a break from yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, when you went into 2020, were you aware of who you were? And like how you would have to handle you in those moments, or did yep. you have to learn something about yourself? Yep. I was already on a trajectory of um, mm -hmm. not really like herbs. Um, definitely nutrition, definitely mm -hmm. knowing that, you now I stopped taking like the, um, the flu shot about like two or three years before that, mm -hmm. because it's like, all right, I'm not getting sick. Um, and then I feel like I'm getting sick when I do take it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's, they're, they're built to make you sick. Like, I, yeah. I'll, you, you've taken the right <laughs> classes, so you understand how it yeah, works, right? Like, yeah. I think, uh, when I was in, um, high school, I was like, I wanted to be a doctor, right? Okay. And like the reason I wanted to be a doctor was because I was born and raised in a hospital, East Orange General Hospital over okay. in Jersey. So I was a patient advocate. I'd worked the floors. I dealt with a lot of AIDS patients and everything else. Okay. And when I was school, thank you. When I was in school, I remember um, it was one of my biology teachers. I think it was Mr. Nugent or someone else. And they said, yeah, no, nah, the flu shots actually, they have the um, proteins that your cells would connect to to get you sick. And the point is to get you sick now so when the actual virus hits, because they know what virus and strains are coming out because this right. is the direction that they mutate in, mm -hmm. all right, we're going to get you sick now. So when the real virus comes and you get sick, your body, is its immune system will be prepared. Basically, so I can yeah, understand yeah. why you would say that because you're like, nah, I'm boosting my immune system all the time. Why yeah. would I want to get sick? Yeah. But like the way science works is we'd rather make you sick now than you get sick later and your immune system not be prepared for the extreme version of it. So yeah. what flu shots are is they are dumbed down versions of the thing that you're going to get yeah. to better prepare your body. Yeah, it's like, okay, yeah. I've seen you before. When you yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all it is. I, I, know, yeah. I know how to do it. So you. when folks say that, I get that, but it's yeah. just like, nah, you get the shot to get sick. So I yeah. usually, I'm surprised when people get the shot, they don't get sick. Yeah. And I'm just that's like, oh, you, you different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's going on together? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, what you eating over there, yeah. yo? So, right. yeah, no, but I can understand that. Mm -hmm. People, I mean, liquor, it does it. Some people, some, people, some cultures do hotty toddies and all of this stuff to get over illnesses. Well, yeah. You know? And then it's like a certain acidity, like your body mm -hmm. can get sick and not get sick. It just really, mm -hmm. everybody's different, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of learning your body, yeah. were there ever moments on your wellness journey where you were like, my DNA is kind of good when you're taking care of it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, it really is. Mm -hmm. um, 
and just my body in general. Like yeah. I've always been this like. I, I feel like being an athlete, you always have the mindset of like, damn, I, yeah. If I keep this habit up, I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm doing like I can push myself. Mm -hmm. So being an athlete, running track and playing football, mm -hmm. I, I don't know the correct term is like loss or outgrew, but asthma. I had asthma when I was. You can outgrow asthma. Yeah, depending depending on when you catch it and how you train it. So I had it bad when yeah. I was young, when I was a child. Like like Children's Hospital knew mm -hmm. me. Like they really knew on me. On the like, regular. Yeah, like yeah. Um, like emergency visits, mm -hmm. um, attacks, um, I had inhalers, had the breathing machine, all mm -hmm. of that stuff, man. And then I was just like, I gotta get over this. Like this is this is is not nah. This can't be my life. So. Mm -hmm. Through sports and being active and consistently, you know, running, I think that really helped me. Um, I noticed, like in high school, I started to get over it because the winters, because the air is a little thicker mm -hmm. um, or thinner. Um, heavy it, um, summer, it's heavier. Yeah. Winter, it's, it's thinner. thinner. Yeah, yeah. Winter is thinner. Yeah. Um, I had some issues breathing sometimes. Like I couldn't wear like a visor like my mm -hmm. freshman year. So oh, because yeah. you needed more. I air needed all in. of that. Yeah. But it was like I was intentional about nah. Like I I can do better. Mm -hmm. You know I can I can push myself. So you know from football season that starts you're training all the time. Especially now, which I wish we had like seven or seven and all that. <laughs> and, and, and I wish. I was I was thinking about getting another mountain mask. I, have like one of those. I used yeah. to I used to train in one of those heavy yeah. and like lately my breathing has been getting like a lot constricted and it's like well you're not doing as much cardio as you used to yeah that matters and like I'm very I'm I'm big on you got to put yourself through the fucked up situation yeah you, you just got to do it because yeah. like if you do it your body's more prepared for it your mm -hmm. body adapts to it if you're not treating yourself like trash but then when the battles come you're like why are they beating me it's like you didn't put yourself through enough bro right. you just didn't yeah you got to understand what your limit is and like yeah. it's very it's possible to train yourself smartly so like yeah. at the end of every one of my workouts i'm inside the sauna for like 40 minutes yeah that's and we have a is. unisex sauna so it's like i be in there two hours and 20 minutes straight working out yeah and then chilling in the sauna gallon of water killing a gallon Right, and it's like you know, waste wise, you're either gonna get it out your pores, or you're gonna mm -hmm. get it in the bathroom. Yeah, either way. Yeah, yeah, it gotta come out either way. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, man. I miss saunas. That's yeah. the only thing I miss about. Do you? Gyms. That's not. That's I you miss saunas. Saunas, man. Yeah, I love heat, man. Uh -huh. Like it's, you know, saunas miss you too, though, man. You gotta get back in it. Why you? Why you just go get a membership and get go, back in it, man? I don't go. To, I just. I don't know, man. Gyms it is different now. Uh. A lot of gyms suck in DC. Yeah, they're they're getting better. There's a lot yeah. of locations that are getting better. And when when we talk about gyms, I think people assume it has bad equipment. And it's like, no, you have a gym with equipment plus yeah. the culture in the gym. Those exactly. two things are very important. Because totally. like, if I go in the gym and I see people aren't competing, I feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I do. I just like yo. So we showing up here every day and no one's competing. Yeah, but I'm I'm hyper competitive when it comes to that stuff. Uh -huh. For folks who just want to go to the gym to like be in shape, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But like, I need to see someone's competing. I need to see someone's working on technique. I need to see someone is so focused when I came in and when I left out within the three hours. They're still going. Yeah, I need to see gyms where like folks are working out so long they took a half hour break and they get back to it yeah. and that's just their thing. That's yeah. that's like what I yeah. was raised with because like the gym I grew up in Diamond Gym in New Jersey uh -huh. all body lifters and NFL players right? Gotcha. So the NFL players weren't there but they have photos of every single person who did these competitions that were mm -hmm. there and they were like hey this little dungeon of a gym they got it out the mud yeah. so you gotta get it out the mud right. and when anywhere I go when it comes to working out I'd be like are they getting it out the mud? Yeah, yeah, are they getting their toes done? Yeah, you, and there's not wrong with getting your toes done. It's just I need mud and socializing. Yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. man, I used to go to a gym. My last gym was in uh, Highsville. Mm -hmm. You know, when I stayed with my grandmother right after college. Yeah, and it was a bunch of like that's a big like Hispanic, um, area, Caribbean, mm -hmm. African area, and yeah. it was just a lot of brothers in there just socializing, lifting upper body, mm -hmm. legs small, not doing any squats. That's crazy. Um, waiting, you train the legs. You waiting for train women. Yeah, that's the most important you thing. You gotta train the Especially legs. Especially for us men. The women be super competitive in my gym too. So it's yeah. not just the dude. The women, the women be getting it out the gym. Yeah. I be like, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, y'all, y'all vicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They got yeah. a different motive in there too, though. Yeah. You know? As they should. As they Every, should. Everyone should have their own goals. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think, 
I think it, I'd be remiss if like I assume they're there just because I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like real life. Like I, I, I like hearing yeah. people's goals. Sometimes I like seeing like, all right, what are you willing to do to get to your goal? Because yeah. like that lets me know I might not be doing enough. Yeah. I might. I might be delusional on if I'm really getting it in. Yeah. And it's like, you know, those those moments you, you get to check yourself. Yeah. But um tell me about the importance of the vulnerability concept that we've come up with total truth and what was the importance that you felt from what we had put together on Saturday. You know what, uh I think I don't know if you've seen it, but Brett he like when he talked about vulnerability, he like pointed to me. And I think that's one of the first times we really connected. We had a like our second or third event. He had a yoga event in DC mm -hmm. in a Navy Yard and I was vending. And he was just talking about that one day that kind of changed, I think, his trajectory of he wasn't just feeling his best. Mm -hmm. And I knew it. Like as soon as he walked in, I knew his energy was down and, and he was vulnerable with the class, which I told him I'm proud of. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, he always gave me a second to speak and I'm just like, there's strength and vulnerability. Letting people know you're not at your best and that you're weak at this moment because mm -hmm. it let people know that you're a real human being. A lot of people don't see that from me. They just think, well, Dip, you're just always doing the right thing. You always, you're just always happy. Or you don't, it's nah, like, but you don't see no way, no the lie. shadow work. Yeah. Nah, they don't, that's yeah. why I wear black because that's a sense of shadow work as mm -hmm. well, too. Like, they, don't, they don't see what I go through. They don't see how I talk to myself when I rise or when I meditate or mm -hmm. when I'm working out or like just how I view my family and how I feel like I'm the the stepping stone of our generation and the building who you defined to be or who i'm defined to be you yeah. know because i'm defining that self and for some people they can't see that they just mm -hmm. like you just working too hard or you just you just eat too healthy or you just training yeah. too hard it's like that's but you don't know admiring the results and not the person yeah you yeah. don't you don't know and i have to put this work in mm -hmm. i got to be that example especially yeah. for my siblings you know yeah but um vulnerability is so important it's okay to be weak it's okay to tell people just mm -hmm. have the proper social circle to tell people that you're feeling weak at this time so they won't judge you because there's a lot of judgment there's a lot of you know you being soft right now you're doing mm -hmm. this like nah bro like i'm just going through it and i need yeah. to talk to you and i'm building that with my brothers mm -hmm. yeah a lot yeah. of my brothers a lot of people i still i play football over in high school um we're building that circle and being like real with each other and it was awkward at first mm -hmm. you know it was awkward to to be real after all of this you know masculinity and you know just telling people like i'm good and it's like bro i'm not good you're not or you're not. yeah which was weird in the beginning that i kind of started i told my brothers i love them mm -hmm. you know when i get off the phone or when i'm dapping them up i love you man and it's weird at first but it's like nah it's that's it and had it's to, necessary i had to say that to my man yeah uh, the one who i told you about that like pulled up on me and we had that chat and yeah. Like, you know I love you right and he laughed he said nah I, was like, no, I'm dead serious I was like look yeah. <clears throat> each one of my relationships are separate relationships in this life mm -hmm. I've lost a lot of people and a lot of things but I've yeah. never missed the opportunity to let people know that I love them yeah. I was like I need you to understand you're one of those people I was like because I'm having a conversation with you mm -hmm. about your SI when it comes to suicidal ideations or anything else like that, mm -hmm. I don't have to love you to have a conversation about suicidal ideation and what's right for you. Right. But I need you to understand you're one of the people I've grown to love and you've become a part of my life. Yeah. And I think it's very important that you understand the value that you've given me and that I'm grateful. And mm -hmm. I want you to understand that you did that. Yeah. I was like, you may not realize what your presence has brought or your effect on this world, but just know there are things that you have gotten right, even if it's hard for you to see that right now. That's true. I was like, that's it. And I said, yeah. and I also told him, I was like, you don't, you don't have to say it back. Don't ever feel like yeah. me saying I love you. You have to say it back. You have to work on saying it yeah. back. But I was like, I do want you to understand what you have in life and that that's yours and you earn that and you're worthy of that. Yeah, exactly. You're worthy. That's one of my affirmations. Mm -hmm. man. I'm worthy of anything that I'm being righteous about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, sometimes that's what people need. Like, you know, that's not going to guarantee tomorrow, but like it gives them a little bit more time to think. All right, stuff's messed up. Yeah. But there are things that I do have going on here that care about me like how i would like to care about myself yeah so it's like you know just those simple things right but um 
Yeah, yeah, and also when it comes to bread, I, I had a I had a real strong talking to with bread uh, last week. We uh, sat down, did a jacuzzi interview, but uh, <laughs> some of the uh, cameras messed up, so we're not gonna put that out. But it was great. It was yeah, a great jacuzzi yeah. interview because I was like, I'm very big on when we do these events. I think it's very important to do a recap after each event. Yeah. Because sometimes building hype isn't getting to the event. We do the event. Everyone's happy. Oh, we got this thing. Sometimes it's all right. What did you learn? Yeah. How did you feel about the people? Yeah. What did you hear in the room? Do you remember what was said? How mm. important was seeing men talk about that? Yeah. We saw an uptick in husbands. That was awesome. Yeah. That was the most amount of husbands we've seen in a room for an all male event that we've done so yeah. far. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to cancel on this one because Brett needs time. But I told him, I said, hey, I decided to work with you. Yeah. You taking time is important, but you ask to work with me. So if mm. we set the standard of I'm working with you and people see you take time off and I start working with other people, they may start to question if we're serious about what we're doing. And you know, that's how they look at black people anyway. Yeah. You know. So I was like brothers, man. So I was like, you know, instead of working with someone else, I'd rather we cancel and we do what we're gonna do in September and focus yeah. on what we're focusing on. But he told me the reason he's doing it is because of burnout. He's like, I always work hard enough to the burnout, then I give myself a vacation and I was like, That's bad. He's like, What yeah. do you mean? I said, if you're practicing what you preach, it's very dangerous if people realize all this great work that you're doing, mm. you're burning at the stake. Yeah. Because that means whether it comes to wellness, whether it comes to this great advice, whether it comes to all these things that we've produced and we've given people. Yeah. If the sacrifice of doing these things is that we're consistently burning and we're walking this fine line of burning out. Right. That may be proof we're not taking care of what we need to when it comes to ourselves. And yeah. we can't give to the community if we're not taking care of who we've had to be or who we are. Exactly. So I told him, I was like, you know, do the vacation and everything else, but you may need to rethink your approach of all these things that you're doing. Because like, we have a lot of big contracts we're working on. We have a lot of great opportunities but i was yeah. like don't feel you need to burn yourself from two ends of the stick to prove i am this great person yeah showing up you've been that great person exactly there's yeah. you're not your accomplishments yeah. you feel what i'm yeah. saying yeah. like yeah. there's gonna be one day you can't accomplish things anymore and it's like you know what that's cool i did enough yeah you and that's it person. yeah that's it so yeah. where can the folks find you uh so instagram green or life um that's going to be like that's social media everything so that's my ig right now mm -hmm. um youtube starting soon green or life and business the asper herbs the asper herbs ig twitter mm -hmm. tiktok uh dasperherbs.com and you can find all the products as well too okay cool beans yeah. and um what's one piece of advice you'd give someone that's looking to be a part of the wellness brand that you've built um just think about your life so far and mm -hmm. what you've already been through. And um, wellness is so broad, you know, like I'm used to being like the IT field and they used to say IT is just like one big lake, it's but an inch thick, you yeah, know? Yeah, just, just a drop. Yeah, yeah, it's just like <laughs> wherever you want to get into, just, you know, just go. Um, What's that IT, where you in? So system admin. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, system. yeah, for me, cloud architecture. Yeah, did you get yeah. certified? You got any certs for that? Um, AWS. Okay. Yeah, AWS, AWS, and um, I'm thinking of getting Cisco certified. We'll see about that, but I mean, you know, it's, it's about tough. the job, the opportunities. It's a, it's it's a beautiful community I'm a part of. Yeah. Honestly, if if wherever I work, I'm very like, hey, I'm great at the things that I do in touch. That's never been a question. My question is, am I going to enjoy the people that's in the room with me as we do this? Yeah. And do you feel a conflict of like this brand you're building and this IT, or just like this? You IT? need money. You need money. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what, at this at this point, yeah. the way everything's built, you need money. That's like the struggle right now. Yeah. Um, but you're supposed to have that struggle. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? I think I'd be more struggled if I didn't have the money to do the things that I'm doing. Because at the end of the day, money will buy you peace. Yeah. And you create peace with the community that's around you. Right. Money will buy you security. That's one less thing that you and your family needs to worry about yeah. and like be concerned with. Um, and money buys you responsibility. Yeah. AKA, I can be responsible enough to take care of the things that we need to take care of. And no one feels like I have to always sacrifice to do the right thing. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. And I mean... The money is there. It depends on the companies that you're working with, quite honestly, their yeah. mission and how they've moved. Yeah. And I'm very big on 
you're not going to be able to change most of these cultures unless you change it from within. Yeah. It's like With a, my resume, uh, I change things from within. My Everywhere I've gone, my opinion has changed something for the better. Yeah, same. And my personality and all that, it's mm-hmm. just like, I want to, I'm just in a, a line of like, do I get back in IT mm-hmm. or just put all my energy into my passion, you yeah. know? But it's just like, I have this family. Yeah. You yeah. know, that I created as well and then I'm continuing, you know, so mm-hmm. it's just like, you can be both. I can do both. Yeah. You can be both. You know, yeah. you know, um, I think we suffer from hero syndrome mm. as a society. We we suffer from celebrity. We suffer from hero syndrome and we suffer from what's right and what's wrong. But we don't look at the interconnectedness of most of the things that you're going to want to accomplish is probably going to be connected to something that's negative in someone else's life. Mm. You can't get away from that because of how the world is now set yeah. up and how money flows. Exactly. So exactly. my concern is, okay, well, what are you doing with the thing that you've made? Because you don't owe anybody shit. Right. Like, we don't owe anybody anything. Yeah. Except for our family and the people we've made promises to, we owe them things because we've promised. Yeah. And that's who we are. Yeah. So I don't really have an issue with being a hero or a villain. I always ask myself hey am I doing right by the people that I've promised to do right by yeah and I am I a man or a woman of my word yeah. that's that's what I'm concerned with yeah, right. the people that are in front of me are we really folks of our words and if we're not mm-hmm. we may need to start handing our word out of I got you I got you I got you and be like I don't have it yeah sure. that's it just I don't have it and, and if you don't have it cool Practice not having it and practice standing on it, and that's cool. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is. That's where I'm at with it. I get it. It's been your boy Juice. Get home safe. Appreciate y'all homies pulling up. My man Dip. We in here. Peace. Peace.